it's still a little bit too cold. I missed the opportunity last week when we had 10 degree weather for one day to start on the Ducati. I kind of weighed up all my options and I put it off because half doing a job and then waiting another two weeks until I could do another layer or anything, putting the gel coat down and then doing the fab glass afterwards, just no, it doesn't gel well with me in that sense. So, still waiting for that warm weather. In fact, you can probably see how cold it is in here at the moment. But we are back talking about the mongrel today. Not so much working on it, just preparing parts. The mongrel, as you know, is an all out beast that should never have been created. And so that leads to the question, what tires would be put on something like this? In my mind, it was always meant to look classic. It was meant to look old. It was meant to look kind of rescued which is why I went with that Pooch MV50 tank. Keeping it as it is, all patinaed and everything, and especially the wheels as well, keeping whatever patina that is left on the wheels, trying to make it vintage. So these, so this is the current wheel for the mongrel. As you can see, it's got an old tire on it. I mean, the tread isn't all that bad, but it's turned into plastic, it's that old. It's turned into plastic, there's nothing rubbery about it anymore. I think if I took this out, I'd probably be sliding everywhere, so this is not a good tyre. But we are still keeping the spoked rims, and I really do like this. I mean, this the rear wheel is in a heck of a lot better condition than the front. So what tyres do we put on this? These, yeah, they're average. What are they? Uh, reading out, it's a 120 tyre, 16 inch rim, obviously, so 120, 90, 16. The 90 profile, yeah, it looks fine. It's a chunky profile still because it's a 120 tyre, 90% of that, still means it's fairly chunky. But I think we can go chunkier than that. And so the question is, what tyre do we put on the mongrel? And this is the solution. You all seen this type of tyre on cafe racers, and generally the first thing people are going to think are Firestones. Now these aren't Firestones. Firestones, a brilliant brand, however, are very expensive when it comes to these tyres, these corker tyres. I don't know whether it's demand, limited availability of these, or even the production costs, because they are, they're not going to be as popular as your run-of-the-mill tyre that Firestone want to produce. I don't know if it's, if it's either of those or a combination of all three, but Firestone tyres are very, very expensive. And for the purpose that I want to use these for, for the mongrel, I couldn't warrant spending that much. Now, a bit of investigating, and I found these. These are called TT Classic Victory. Exactly the same looking as Firestones. You cannot tell the difference between them, apart from the tread name on the side. These have got TT Classics written on the side. What I do especially like about them, I mean, they are very, very rubbery. You can even see where the teeth grab in, ever so slightly when you're actually applying pressure on that kind of digs itself, claws itself down. What I do like about these is the whole chunkiness and the profile of them. Like I mentioned with the other ones, they were 90 profiles on 120 width tyres. These are 5 inch tyres, conversion about 120, 125, so similar width tyre, but the profile is so much greater on these. These are 16 inch as well, but they look absolutely huge. Look at that. It looks like a massive rubber ring. I do like it. Quite thin looking, it is a 120 tyre, but it is quite thin in that sense. The other point I like about these big walls is that it allows me to draw whatever I want on the side of the mongrel. Obviously being an unloved bike, it's probably going to have a bit of graffiti on the rear wheel and that's going to be one of the things I'm going to be doing in these upcoming episodes after I've mounted it on the rim itself. Now I just want to mention that North Hans Tyres hooked me up with these so there's a link down below so you can check out their website. They are a supplier of these brands as well. A fraction of the cost of Firestone Tyres but look exactly the same and if you want to, if you really want it to be that cheeky, you could always draw your own Firestone logo on the side with some white tire marker. Hey, no one's gonna know. So I am excited to put these on, but looking at them compared to the existing rim and the tire, I'll put both of them side by side in a minute. This is much bigger tire. That profile itself takes the back of the mongrel, it will take the back of the mongrel, so much more higher. I'm going to have to possibly rethink how I'm going to do the swing arm, whether I'm going to actually extend the swing arm a little bit or I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes on that. If I need to extend the swing arm a bit further out, I can do that. I'm not worried about the hoop. I'm worried about the height. Obviously where we've positioned the shocks, it might need to change. So these are a tubed tyre. Don't forget you will need tubes which I have mine here and you'll also need rim tape as well 
for this. Because I'm putting them on spokes, what I don't want to do is have the spokes dig into this or friction or anything like that. So it's that extra sense, and that extra layer of protection to keeping your tube nice and tidy. Just to show an example of the difference in size between this tire and the existing tire. It's a little bit heavy because it's got the rim on. Put both next to each other. And you know what? It's surprisingly not that much. It's probably about three inches, possibly four. But still, saying that, three or four inches. Yeah, that is quite a big difference actually when you're actually thinking how much it's lifting the bike off the ground. You can actually see between them, they're both actually the same width. Although the old one does look a little bit thinner, but I think that's more of an optical illusion than anything else. I think because it's flatter at the top, it looks a bit thinner. But they're both 120s. And just to show you, this is the front as well. There is a little bit of difference in the front. The front is a 17 inch rim, but it is... Is it smaller? Let's see. Yes, it is a smaller overall because we've got that four inch width, which is, what's that, 100? Profile is a lot shorter on this. Still a very chunky one. It's not gonna be weighted equally when you look at the bike itself. I mean, in, a, in an ideal world, I probably would have gone for a 16 inch front and have the same tire on the front and the rear. But, but at the same time, I know that's not really common practice with the style of bike that I'm going with. So I went for a 17 inch rim and it cost me five pounds as well. So I really can't complain on that. The five inch and the four inch, 17 and 16. That is all from me. The next video will be me fitting the tires onto the rim. And the reason I'm not doing that today is because I don't have any tire levers. Nothing in here. And we are in quarantine as well. So I can't just nip to where they are and get them. We've got to get them delivered. So that is a real pain. But that video will be up soon. And then you can see how it looks on the rim. But if you want to follow this bit, see the frame being welded and the bike being put together, as well as that carbon fibre job, as soon as it warms up, that'll be on the Ducati. There are going to be extra videos on the Ducati as well. Things that I can be doing whilst I'm waiting for that body work to be done. So if you like what you see, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well. Visit fullboatindustries.com if you want to see if there's any merchandise that you like. Like this BMW flying brick tee. So until next week, do what you want.